Hi, my name is Jeff Lucky. I'm the warehouse manager here at CableOrganizer.com. I'd like to give you a demonstration today on our inventory program that we run. First, I'd like to show you the old method. This was our paper method. What you see here is two and a half months worth of inventory. Every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we run a paper, we used to run a paper inventory. It would print out sheets, giving us a location, a SKU, a description, a quantity on hand, and an order pending, if there might be one that hasn't been filled yet. The, the counter would go to location, count what we would have on hand, and check to see if the number corresponded to what Stone Edge says. This was very difficult because during that time, Stone Edge became obsolete. No work could be done in Stone Edge that might reflect what inventory showed. If a person were to create an order inside Stone Edge, it would deduct from inventory, it would askew our numbers. So then we created this method, which contains our scanning gun, and we'll give you a demonstration on this later. But first I'd like to show you our admin console, which, which allows us to look inside this program and make adjustments as necessary. Okay, what we're looking at here is the administration console of our inventory program. I have three buttons here that I can use. First thing I can do is I can search for a SKU. When I type in a SKU and hit the OK button, it tells me the last time the SKU was counted and how many particular we had on hand at that time. That way if there is a discrepancy when the item is counted again, we can start with that date and work our way forward and see where the discrepancy may have occurred. I can also view the current count status. Here I can see what person still has what location account and how many SKUs in that location they have yet to count. I can also assign a SKU and a location. Here I have people that have yet been assigned, location, assigned locations and I can choose the location I wish to assign them. This is very good for if a person might be absent one day. We're trying to finish the week that we need to count. That way I can easily release a location from one person and assign it to another. It is also very random when someone signs in as well because they, they do not know what location they're going to get. It's almost like a lottery. So it's very good for someone that might be complacent that doesn't know what SKUs have yet to be counted or what locations. Now let me show you how the actual inventory program works. Okay. Here we have Tony and Tony's going to log in with the handheld and begin the inventory count. He's going to launch the program through the desktop. And what it's going to do is it's going to, after he signs in, it's going to assign him a random location. He has his own personal password. Now we use an ABC inventory, which means our A's get counted more than our B's, our B's get counted more than our C's. And the A's get counted about three times a year, the B's will get counted twice a year, and the C's once a year. That means that our fastest moving items get more attention than the slower moving items. Q1B. Now he knows he needs to go to Q1B to start. And first it will tell him as we have everything barcoded, the first scan that location. Okay. Here we got our first location, which is Q1B. Tony will then take the scanner and scan that location. If he scans the wrong location, it'll tell him wrong location. After he scans the location, it will tell him what SKU to scan. We have everything barcoded, so all he needs now is either we have a magnetic tag in front of the actual item, or the actual item has a barcode in front of it. Now it says count the number of items on the SKU. Now he will count the number of items in the SKU. If his number is off, it will tell him he is off. It will not tell him how much he is off by, but it will give him an idea. If he's, say, 20 off, it'll tell his number is off by more than 10, and vice versa. Five. Five. So we'll then enter the number 5 into the handheld. Good count. And it tells him his count is good. I hit OK. He hits OK, and it then tells him to move to the next section. Q1E. So here. E. Uh, oh, had to be those. 25, 64. Now I count this. Now these are our rubber grommets. As we've been counted before, we know that in here, counted on 5808 is already 100. So once those are sealed, we know that those aren't necessary to count. I'll just count the remaining. Okay, Tony just completed his count and came up with a count of 182. Now to show you our reasons is for the admin council, we're gonna say that he actually counted 172 and show you what happens when the incorrect number is put in. It now tells him that he has an error and his count is off by, by more than 10. So we know that there's supposed to be 182 in the, pro in, in the system, 
because that's what we discounted. But for our sake, we gave the wrong number. It tells them to then count them again. Now we're going to tell Tony that for, for our sake, and we'll show you in the admin council later, that he counted 172 twice. So he's going to put in 172 again. It tells him that his, his count has been recorded. And once he hits OK, it'll give him a new, move him on to the next location. When I log into the admin side, when I check the recounts, his SKU will come up to be recounted. He then moves on to the next section. Okay, so I'm going to launch the program now and log into the admin side. I just logged in, so now I will, I will check on the admin council. It gives me my options. I can archive, which is when the week is done being counted, I archive it, or I can check recounts. Since we are still counting, I will check the recounts. Right now, it shows up as the one location we just ended at with the rubber grommets that Tony counted. We remember that he counted 182, but entered 172 twice. So I choose that item. It tells me to go and scan that location. Here we are at lo our location Q1E. I scan the location, and the unit actually vibrates to let me know that a good scan has occurred. I then scan this Q. Again, now on this screen here, it tells me my current quantity in stone edge, 182. It tells me on the first count that 172 were counted, and on the second count, 172 were counted, and they were counted by Tony. Below is pending items. Pending items are items that may still be on the shelf that Stone Edge believes are off because they've been allotted to an order. What this tells us is if there's a number here that we need to check the line for the item might have been pulled, or if our numbers are off, we know to subtract those numbers from the total count. In this particular case, if we would have seen the pending number of 10 and 182 here, we would know that there's 192 actually on hand. Vice versa here, we just know that he made an error on two counts. We know that there's 182 on hand, so we enter 182. Stone Edge has been updated at that moment to 182. There was already 182 in Stone Edge. We've just affirmed that that's the correct number. If the number had been off, we have just corrected Stone Edge to the correct number on hand. Now, it tells me that I have ended for the day. Are there any more recounts? No. So I check OK. At this particular time, if there were no items left to be counted, I would admin the cycle, which would allow us to continue to a new week. The CableOrganizer.com inventory method is much faster than our old paper method. We've now eliminated our paper waste. This is real time, which means we continue to pull orders and pack orders as, as the counting continues. This is, a, this is a greater opportunity for us to be more accurate. We customize it for the counter. So if we see a, a pattern where they're missing counts for overflow locations, we can now customize it and say, did you, check your in, did you check your overflow location, Tony? This has paid for itself tenfold already, even for the size of our warehouse. The benefits of this have eliminated many wasted man hours.